NUS Obstetrics and Gynecology, keeping mothers and babies safe circa 1922. Since its inception as a maternity hospital in 1924, Kandang Kerbao Hospital was home to the University Department of ONG before the department moved to the National University Hospital when it became operational in 1985. NUH has since been the main hospital supporting the academic development of the department and is today an esteemed institution that provides advanced maternal and fetal health care to expectant mothers in Singapore. In 2022, the NUS Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology celebrates becoming a centenarian, 100 years old. This incredible achievement has only been made possible through meticulous attention to five elements. A committed administration that gels the department, an unrelenting dedication to clinical service by doctors, nurses and ancillary staff an unwavering focus to educate medical undergraduates, an untiring effort to train postgraduate doctors to become outstanding obstetricians and gynecologists, and a single-minded goal towards innovation, research, and the development of obstetrics and gynecology. This is their story. The early years of the 20th century were difficult times for mothers and children. Maternal, especially infant mortality, were worryingly high, mainly due to poor hygiene and nutrition, Although the traditional midwives, or bidans, were important in maintaining certain standards in safe childbirth, there was an urgent need for specialised medical assistance to improve birth outcomes. In 1905, Singapore's first medical school, the Straits and Federated Malay States Government Medical School, was founded as a result of a petition and fundraising efforts led by prominent businessman Tan Jiak Kim. The medical school is known today as the Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine, National University of Singapore. The growing focus on maternity health care led to the official birth of obstetrics and gynaecology in Singapore in 1922, when the Department of Midwifery and Gynaecology was established at the medical school, then known as King Edward VII College of Medicine, with British-appointed Professor Joseph Sandys English at the helm. Professor English laid the foundations for professional maternity care with his dedication to educating doctors, midwives, and especially expectant mothers themselves. In 1929, as Professor English was going about his duties, a local Eurasian man, one Benjamin Henry Shears, was graduating with a licentiate in medicine and surgery from King Edward VII College of Medicine. Professor English eventually requested that Dr. Shears work as his assistant, igniting what was to be an iconic career spanning 40 years. Dr. Shears always strived to harness the latest scientific technologies and surgical methods. After the war, Dr. Shears achieved his membership at the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists in 1948 and displayed tenacity in the face of colonial prejudice to be elected the first Singaporean ONG professor in 1951. At that time, I think it was 75 or 76 when I was the trainee, ONG trainee. Then we have to present the case to presidential and I have the opportunity to assist him in one of those cases. As a doctor, he's very passionate and when come to surgery, he's very decisive and I like the way he put the knife that I scissor that and cut. That impressed me a lot as a trainee at that time. Barry would have some more thought about his innovation in some of the surgery. Um, well, he has of course been known for his vaginoplasty and it's in fact named after him. It's called Shears Vaginoplasty. It had very good physiological principles behind it as well as knowing the embryology of that area of the vagina. I think he brought to us quite a lot of gems of knowledge that he had acquired over the years. In those days, I think things were less scientific. You didn't do things like you know, double-blind control studies and things like that. But he brought with him his experience, which was what was important for those days. In the hands of Professor Shears, ONG in Singapore was set to embark on its most prolific years of growth in the areas of education, clinical expertise and research, ultimately culminating in a world record number of births in the world's largest maternity hospital at the time. The growing reputation of Singapore ONG on the world stage was further developed by Professor S.S. Ratnam, who assumed the chair of University ONG in 1970. An internationally renowned practitioner, Professor Ratnam displayed vision 
enthusiasm and resourcefulness in bringing ONG into the modern era. Professor Ratnam knew only too well that I really enjoyed obstetrics and fetal medicine. He called me in one day, sat me down and asked me, Mayesh, even if you work very hard, around the clock, every day, how many babies do you think you could deliver in your lifetime? We did the math and we came up with a maximum of 10,000 deliveries. So, he said, you would only help 10,000 moms and families. Now, if you were able to discover a protein that caused preeclampsia, Prof was fixated on preeclampsia, how many lives would you save? Millions, and even more millions after you go. That is the power of research. That is why this department must focus on research. At that moment, a light bulb switched on in my head, and I understood what I, what we, and what this department must do. He was interested in research. He wants to pick up uh, clinicians and scientists and then encourage them to come to the department. And that is where they started. But now, in today's context, if you see, research is very important. The entire, the government is supporting so much. And, and then the clinician scientists are created. Our department has got a lot of clinician scientists. It was not there in, in the 70s or 80s. In many ways, our department is one of the best in Asia and the world. The IVF in Asia, the first baby, was from Singapore. And the prostaglandins, with the, all the publications, the world knew that this uh, department is a center for, for prostaglandin research. Professor Ratnam was very successful in improving clinical services and maintaining research funding and output throughout his tenure as the chief of the ONG department. But perhaps his greatest talent was identifying and nurturing the next generation of clinical and research leaders to carry this legacy forward. With Professor Rodnam's force of personality at the fore, this spurred a prolific period of scientific discovery and breakthrough in assisted reproductive techniques, or ART. One of his protégés was Professor Arif Bongso, a pioneering scientist in human reproduction, embryobiology, reproductive stem cells, and biotechnology. Assisted Reproductive Technologies ART, were a significant field of interest, especially during the baby-booming 80s and 90s. Starting with Asia's first IVF baby in 1983, micromanipulation of human gametes and embryos were to prove useful in treating infertility. Various NUS luminaries were responsible for leading the way in clinical and research output, resulting in several major breakthroughs, not just for Asia, but even globally. As NUS ONG continued to build both capability and reputation, research encompassing the entire life cycle of reproduction has also experienced accelerated specialist development. From antenatal diagnostics and fetal monitoring, to pioneering research on the role of hormones in pregnancy, disease and contraception, research has progressed to include diverse and crucial topics that include adolescent gynecology, male sexual dysfunction and andrology, menopause treatment, and even gynaeoncology and reproductive medicine. To this day, NUSONG continues its groundbreaking research in diverse aspects of women's health, thanks to the many talented individuals who have dedicated themselves to the advancement of knowledge. Along the way, the roles of midwives and nurses continue to evolve, especially from the 1970s onwards. There was a time we used to do things, oh, we have done this this way. But this has changed now because research and evidence, that's informing our care. So I think it's a beautiful involvement, not only just evidence-based, it's also up-to-date care. So we can't just do things the way we feel that it should work. It should be based on research. So I think that's something, as nurses and midwives, we have accepted that, and that's something we are now moving forward very proudly. As the nursing profession gained recognition over time, midwifery disciplines were progressively incorporated into nurse training. Recruitment of non-nurse pupil midwives ceased in 1976, and responsibility for managing childbirth soon shifted from the midwife to the physician. Today in Singapore, the majority of deliveries are conducted by physicians and take place in hospital, 
while a minority of childbirths are managed by midwives. I hear from my teachers. They actually go to the patients or those who stay at the houses. So they actually deliver babies there. Uh, they will have regular checkups, so they'll, they'll bring a little bag and there's this thing called the fetal scope. They will listen to the baby's heartbeat. So they travel, they used to tell me they even walk past kampongs and all those things. So what has evolved now is where all women will be delivered in the hospitals because of the risk of the bleeding after delivery. We have evolved in the way that there is a need that the nurses are now degree holders. They go for higher educations like masters, advanced practitioner nurses, as well as doctors and PhD. That's the need. Reason being because we need us, we nurses and midwives, to be problem solvers, critical thinkers, effective communicators, and an effective team player in interdisciplinary teams. Like they say that you know doctors are the brain of the healthcare. I feel nurses are the heart of the healthcare. Today, our department is one of the premier ONG units in Singapore, in the region, and even in the world. If we seem to have a clear vision and purpose, it is because we stand on the shoulders of academic giants. They had painted for us a dream that has lasted a century, and a vision that has taken us 100 years to bring to fruition. A vision that has taken us down to the very moment of conception, and a dream that will one day take us up to the stars.